Hi. In the next few videos, we're going to talk about how we can form trajectories, that is, sequences of object states. In the estimation in the PMBM filter and the MBM filter, we compute a set of estimates. And we can say that this is the output from the filter at time k, the set of estimates. On the right, we have illustrated a set of three estimated objects, specifically their 2D positions. So what we have at time k is an estimate of the number of objects, in this example 3, and the states of the objects. In the example, we can see the positions. For many applications, knowing where the objects are right now is sufficient. For example, if we want to implement collision avoidance in an autonomous car, we need to know what the current states of the objects are. We need to know their current positions, and the current estimate of the motion parameters allow us to predict where the objects are going to be in the near future. However, in other applications, we want to know also the past history of states for each object. Maybe we're tracking birds and we want to analyze migratory patterns, or we're tracking football players to analyze how they move during a game. A trajectory is defined as a sequence of states, from some initial time to some end time, which might be the current time step or an earlier time step. So on the right, we have illustrated for each object its current position by a circle, and the past history of positions can be seen as the lines. So the question is, how can we obtain these trajectories? In tracking literature, there are two main approaches. The first is based on sets of labeled objects, and the other is based on sets of trajectories. We're going to begin with sets of labeled states, and we will return to sets of trajectories later. Consider the object estimates on the right here. We have 10 discrete time steps on the x-axis and one-dimensional states on the y-axis. The output from the tracking filter are sets of object estimates at each time step, illustrated by the red circles. At each time step, there are three estimates, and if we follow them from time 1 to time 10, we can suppose that there are three trajectories starting at time 1 and ending at time 10. So it's not impossible to form trajectories from these estimates. We could, for example, use the motion model to try to hypothesize which states should form a trajectory. However, this would require some elaborate post-processing. And a key insight here is that the trajectory information is not directly available from the output, from the sequence of sets of estimates. A simple idea to fix this, and to make it easier to form trajectories, is to assign to each estimate some kind of unique identifier, a so-called label. So on the right, we have assigned unique labels to the estimates, and it is now easy to see the trajectories. We can just connect the green triangles, the blue circles, and the orange squares, and this gives us trajectories. So to integrate this idea into an MBM filter or a PMBM filter, we need a new kind of random finite set, which is a labeled set. Okay, a trajectory is a sequence of states from some initial time to some end time. And next, we will see how we can form trajectories using sets of labeled objects.